We won't get wrapped up in that 134 because the upward revision is pretty decent and the overall picture that's, for the labour market that's is really key pretty point. good. So let's Can start I just talking. stick it in? Let's no, hey, just, I just want to make that point. I don't mean to interrupt. But that's a really key point because you of all people know how these numbers bump around. So you got a 130 something and you got an 80,000 plus uh, revision. So this is actually, you know, the increase in the level for September is uh, what, a two, 211, 215,000. That's an awful good number. I just want to make that point. It's a point well made, Larry. So let's talk about the unemployment rate. 48 year low. For the administration, what's your view on how low this can go? Because many economists are saying we're at full employment. This is kind of it. We can't go much lower than this. Do you have a different opinion, Larry? Well, I don't want to give a forecast per se, but I do think it can go lower. And I think people are moving back into the labor force as wages and incentives uh, increase. You know, lower taxes and so forth. <clears throat> you got fatter paychecks going. Uh, I just did some calculations. I hope I get this right. The uh, average hourly earnings up 2.8% year on year in the report. But Jonathan, I like to add the work hours. The increase in work hours for the year is uh, 2.6. So you put those two together, you got 5.6% per six, 5 increase in wage income. And I'm going to take the PCE data at two, right? The inflation at two. That's a three and a half, 3.6% real wage increase. That's huge. And all I'm saying is after taxes, that's going to bring more people into the workforce. So we're growing in a capital goods boom. And I think unemployment has some downside to go. But mostly it's a very healthy story. And the data this week has been pretty stellar. The ADP report earlier this week gave us a pretty good sign of what was happening. The non-manufacturing ISM. All of this, Larry, is driving a pretty sustained bid back into the U.S. dollar. It was stable for a period of this year. It's starting to rally again. And I just wonder whether the president thinks that what is happening in the FX market is offsetting some of the accomplishments elsewhere. Well, no, look, the dollar's actually been pretty steady. I have it on my sheets from yesterday, 95 and three quarters, call it 96. That's pretty much in the mid-range, I think, of the last 10 or 12 years. It's gone up and down. A healthy dollar is a healthy economy. A healthy dollar attracts investment for all over the world. And we're providing enough incentives and competitiveness, again, on low taxes and regulations to bring money home. I think it's a terrific positive. I, you know, I think it's a great read on the success of the country. Uh, our view, the Treasury view, Steven Mnuchin's view is we would like a stable, you know, stable, steady, strong dollar as far as the eye can see. Looks like we're getting that. There's a lot of confidence here. Is that the president's view too, Larry? I think generally it is the president's view. The president has a lot of opinions, uh, sometimes up, sometimes down. We're not trying to influence anybody's policy. We're not trying to influence the Fed's policy. We're not trying to influence the dollar policy. It's steady as you go. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, Jay Powell, as you know, has made a lot of interesting statements saying that better growth, which is what we're getting, is not necessarily inflation. And I would say, Jonathan, if you have a steady dollar, you got a low, steady gold price. Uh, that's a big sign. There's no inflation out there. We're just growing. And you were talking about bond rates a few moments ago. Uh, I don't know what your quote is this morning, about 3.2 percent for the 10 year, I think. That's up about 35 basis points. So it's the long end of the curve. It's not the Fed funds rate. But most of that is the real interest rate, the real tips rate, which is up, I think, three quarters or you know, almost 80%. What does that tell you? I suggest people are expecting higher capital returns and stronger U.S. economic growth ahead. That's a very positive sign.